Hello guys, welcome to lecture 2. We are going to be talking about the Unix architecture in this part of the lesson. Okay, now, now you might be wondering, why are we talking about these things? Do they really matter? You know, a lot of people are writing codes, they are doing stuff and they do not know why they are writing what they are writing and doing what they are doing. And that is because they did not take time to master the foundations. What we are going through now are the foundations that you need. If you do not take your time to grasp these concepts, you are going to find yourself struggling when we start dealing with the advanced concepts. You realize that you come across a certain piece of code, you come across a certain practice, and you don't know why this or why that. So take your time and go through these things that we are learning and you have a very firm foundation to delve into advanced concepts. So with that said, let's delve straight into what the Unix architecture is. This is a very foundational aspect of software engineering in itself, especially when you are a Unix programmer. Okay, so the architecture of a Unix operating system typically consists of the following. So now you realize that we are, we are coming to break the Unix system now and find out what do they consist and what does each, each part mean. Okay, the first part of a Unix architecture is the hardware. So if you pick your computer, for instance, there is a, an aspect of your computer which is known as the hardware. The hardware provides the underlying resources that the operating system uses to perform its functions. Simply, that is the hardware. Now, some components of the hardware are the central processing unit, unit the random access memory, the hard disk or your hard drive, your motherboard, the power supply unit, then input and output devices such as your keyboard, your monitor, then there could even be other accessories that are part of the hardware such as printers, scanners, your mouse. All these form part of the components of your um, system that are known as the hardware. Okay. And it is the hardware that provides the very foundation for your computer itself to run. Because where will you install your operating system if there's no hardware? So this is the foundation of it all. Very important. Then from the hardware, there is an, another component of your Unix system known as the kernel. The kernel is the core component of the operating system and provides essential services such as memory management, process management, and device management. So the kernel is like the central part of your operating system on your um, Unix architecture. The kernel is like, um, if, if we look at a kitchen situation and there are several cooks and a chef, the master chef, okay? The kernel is like the master chef that tells the cooks in the kitchen that do, do this, do that. And the master chef will allocate resources to each of the cooks to um, prepare the meal that they are trying to prepare. So if you think about the kernel, think of it as um, a central component of a system that uh, manages resources for people. You could also think about it as a policeman or a cop directing a traffic situation. Now the cop is the one who determines which car should stop at this point, which car should move, what direction they should go. So he's directing and curating the entire process. This is what the kernel does in an operating system. It is a fundamental aspect of your computer that allows processes to run. Then from the kernel, we talk about the shell and this is where shell scripting comes in. The shell is a command line interface that allows users to interact with the operating system and run commands. So we are going to be dealing with the shell a lot, but you need to know where the shell comes in. So in the Unix architecture, we have understood that there is a hardware from the hardware you come to the kernel which is a central component of your operating system and from the kernel we come to the shell the shell is a command line interface it means that you give commands to the shell the shell passes those commands to the operating system and your computer executes those command we'll talk more about the shell in a bit then on top of the shell there are user application programs Unix supports a wide variety of application programs, including compilers, text editors, web browsers, database management systems, etc., etc. So let's have a graphical view of what we are spoken about so far. This is a very generic image that um, 
um, describes everything that we have said so far. So in your computer system, we have the hardware, okay? Then on top of the hardware, we have the kernel. The kernel is a part of the operating system. It's like the, the real deal of the operating system. And the kernel talks to the shell, and then the shell also deals with various applications. This is like a, a more general image, but let's look at a more detailed version of the, the Unix architecture, okay? Now, this is a more detailed version. Take a look, look at this critically. We have the hardware, of course, in the central as a central component on which everything is built. Then we have the kernel, which we've already spoken about. Then as part of the kernel, there is something called the system calls. Okay, now look at this diagram very well. The shell can pass command to the kernel through what is known as system calls. System calls are simply mechanisms used by user space processes such as the shell to request services and resources from the kernel of the operating system. And there are other libraries that can talk to the kernel directly. However, there are other applications that also talk to the kernel directly, yet there are applications that go through the shell before they reach the kernel. So some applications will pass commands to the shell before it gets to the operating system. And then other applications will talk to the kernel or the operating system directly. Other libraries will have to go through the shell before it gets to the kernel. Others will just talk to the kernel di directly. It really depends on how the system was built. But then the most important thing I want you to get over here is that there is the central component of the operating system known as the kernel. And then on top of that, the shell is built. So when you pass command to the shell, the shell now gives the command to the kernel. The kernel does not understand the language that you speak, human language, for instance. If you pass a command ls or pwd to your shell, the kernel does not understand those languages, that English language you are giving to the kernel. You will have to translate that command that you are giving to the shell to a binary language. This is one of the main purposes of the kernel. So the commands given to the shell are translated to binary, binary language by the kernel and passed to the operating system. Then the system executes the command. So have this image at the back of your mind. This is the basic component of the Unix architecture. It is as simple as that and that ends this lecture. Let's move on to the next.